Get to your dealer now for the Power and Performance Sales Event. Get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. Or earn up to $200 in dealer credit. Yamaha Power and Performance has never been a better value. Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's March 21st. These are your headlines. First and foremost, March 21st, as far as I'm concerned, should be a national holiday. First day of spring, so one of my favorite days of the year. Let me be the first to wish you guys a happy spring. Secondly, we are going to be at the Connecticut Fishing and Outdoor Show this weekend. That's Friday to Sunday at Mohegan Sun, so don't miss us there. And lastly, a couple of fishing things. We've been seeing a lot more herring moving up the runs, which has got the holdover striped bass fired up. And don't forget about those largemouth. That bite has really started to pick up again this week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items for you guys. The first one is all about the Connecticut Fishing and Outdoor Show. That's this weekend at Mohican Sun. It's going to be Friday to Sunday. you got Friday is 1 to 7. Saturday is 9 to 6. Sunday is 9 to 5. And um, it'll be your last opportunity to uh, renew your subscription and get the iPop Popper from Tsunami. You're also going to get your Surehold gift card. I'm sure we'll have a few other things to give away, too, as we're cleaning out the closet here at the end of show season. Uh, so please stop by and say hello there. I will be there Friday and Sunday, so uh, stop by and say hi. My favorite thing about this show, though, is the seminar lineup. They have an unbelievable cast of seminar speakers at this show. you got Crazy Alberto, Janet Massinio, Mike Roy, uh, Joe DiOrio. You've got um, Al Gag is going to be speaking. There's a whole long list of other people, too. I mean, if you go there and just, just see the seminars, you're going to walk out of there a much better fisherman just for the 15 bucks to get in the door. Uh, speaking of Al Gag, he's also going to be inducted into the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame at the show, which is quite the accomplishment for him, but it's also a feather in the cap for every New England angler, if you ask me, because he's a New England guy. He's one of us. And, uh, you know, he climbed the ladder all the way to the Hall of Fame, so we all got a tip or cap to him. And uh, congratulate him. And, it's again, it's just such a great milestone and something awesome to see. And, uh, you know, that's it. That's the, the show is going to be at Mohegan Sun, so come on by, say hello, get your subscription renewed, see some seminars, and I think you're going to be happy you came. Next thing is uh, the next installment of Jenny Ackerman's Open Boat. Here she is. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat, episode 40. We're at the Edison Saltwater Expo, and we have our first guest on the Spring Run Lure. So introduce yourself here and what you got. Hi, Jenny. My name is Tom. I'm from Ewing, New Jersey, and these are some of the lures that we use for trolling stripers in the tributaries. Okay, uh, so what do you got? Do you got a, I got a bottlenose? A bottlenose? And a Rapala Super Shad Wrap. We've Very taken nice. I've taken my biggest striper to date, 40 pounds on this last year. There you go. And we've taken a number of 30, 35 pounders on both of these lures. Can't beat that. All right, we got another open boater here that wants to share his intel on his favorite spring run lure. My name's Rich and my favorite springtime lure of all time is the dock or a spook. Familiar face here if you watched the worm ball video. We are at the tackle box booth with Dan Stahl. Now Dan's gonna tell us his favorite spring run lore. The Monomoy spook. Oh boy, got one at the tackle box. Yeah, get one today. <laughs> All right, now we found a wild Scott. <laughs> We're gonna ask him what his favorite spring run lore is. Oh, that would probably be the Ozuri Magdarter. It's in fact tattooed on his body. That may be true. All right, now we're with local legend Pedro. Pedro, what's your favorite spring run lure? Uh, so my favorite lure for spring run striper fishing in the back bay and surf is gonna, probably gonna be the four inch tsunami shads. Uh, these are the heavy version, but my favorite color is a pearl spot, just because in the spring now, you know, you're gonna be fishing in the back bays. It's still, the water temperatures are still a little cold, so you're gonna be throwing small baits and small lures. So definitely the four inch shad's gonna be a winner. You know, later in the season, I'll be throwing the five, six, and seven inches. But it's gonna definitely be the tsunami swim shad. That's my old Winner, winner and chicken dinner. Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> now we're with Justin Time. Justin, your favorite spring run know. lure? It's gotta be a popper, because watching a striper hit top water is the best thing around. Can't beat that. All right, next up, I found some more local surf rats. Brett of Shemong. I'm Dale from Browns Mills. <laughs> What lures are you guys throwing this spring run? Top spring run lures. 
five inch bone mag daughter all day. Black and purple mega shads, baby. Come on. <laughs> there you go. Another open voter here at the booth. Hi, my name is Mike Garcia, and my favorite uh, springtime striper lure is the Tidal Pro Tsunami Tidal Pro. We got local legend Captain Eric Kerber of On a Mission Fishing Adventures, and he's going to spill the beans on his favorite spring run lure. The Chug Norris from Nomad. Oh, yeah. I got a future, well, current fisherman right here. He's talking about his favorite spring run lure. Hi, my name is Lucas, and my favorite lure is a uh, Yozuri uh, Hydro Minnow. Can't beat a Yozuri Hydro Minnow. Watch out for this little Lucas out here on the surf. He's already crushing stripers, right? Yep. Next up, we got Sam here. Hi, my name is Sam, and I like to use no live bait needed for stripers in the spring. Next up, short catch charters here. We got Elio. Hi, my name is Elio. My favorite spring run lure would be a big metal lip plug. We got Ryan, and my favorite lure is Niz Missouri Hydro Minnow. Another big fan of the Hydro Minnow, slaying fish out here on them. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now we're here with Thomas, master rod builder at eFishing Custom Rods, and your favorite spring run lure is? Uh, NLBN Paddle Tail. That's been a hot one, this open boat run through, and we're gonna go get some more, so let's go. Right now we got Rosetta Stone here. How you doing, I'm Dan Rosetta. What's your favorite spring run lure? I like using flutter springs on the back, it's fun. Eddie Brown from Just Saying. Favorite uh, spring bass lure? Favorite spring bass lure, definitely be the dock. Now we got another legend, Captain Chuck with the Tyvin. What's your favorite spring run lure? Definitely my favorite spring run lure is a live eel. Woo! Last thing, of course, is a giveaway, which is ongoing. Photos are kind of at a trickle right now, but it's March. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But, um, you know, we're getting a few here and there. But, uh, you know, we're giving away a great prize. We're going to give away this Connecticut Yankee dual action swimmer that I made in a pretty cool color. And... Um, you know, you guys know the drill, but if you don't, this is how it's done. you got to send me a photo of you holding a fish. It can't be laying on the ground. I got a picture the other day of a couple fish laying on the ground next to the guy's foot. And uh, those do not qualify. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> but it's got to show you holding a fish. It's got to be recently caught, too, so in the last month or two. And uh, send them to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen and just tell me you know, that you want to be in the contest, first of all, so contest or giveaway in the subject line. And then just tell me a little bit about the catch. So it's got to give me your name, got to tell you, tell me where the fish was caught, how big it was, all that stuff. And uh, send them in to me. And uh, on April 24th, I'm going to pick a new winner. Someone's going to win that plug. And in, in either case, you're probably going to find your way into the magazine and you may even find yourself in the report. So send them in and we'll see who wins. Moving over to the reports now, we're going to start things off with some good news. I was reading the Long Island reports uh, from our Long Island edition, and I saw that the striped bass showed up a little bit early, so I asked Matt Broderick, uh, the editor over there, to tell us a little bit about what's going on. So here he is. Yeah, Dave, it's true. The stripers did show up early this year in the western sound on Long Island. Uh, we're talking about Manhasset, Little Neck, uh, all out that way by the, uh, the Throgs Neck Bridge. There are a lot of schoolie stripers out there. Guys have been getting on them from both the boat. But I heard the surf is a little better. The fish are tighter into the shore, into those shallow waters. Uh, guys have been throwing baits like bloodworms, sandworms, but the guys throwing lures. They're using four and five inch NLBNs and owl gags. Tails, they've been really getting on them. Seems that it, it's like the outgoing tide, that warmer water. But I think that maybe it's this mild weather, uh, weather we're having, this mild winter that might be pu pushing these stripers in, getting them to move a little more, a lot of bait. So get on them and, you know, hopefully to make their way up to you too. Now we'll jump over to the freshwater synopsis and uh, a couple cool things going on this week. We've got the perch spawn going on, especially along the southern coast. So like within 20 miles of the coast, I'd guess uh, this is where it's starting to take place. Maybe it goes further inland. I'm not sure. But um, yellow perch spawn on structured vegetation. So it could be reeds. It could be a bush that, that kind of reaches down into the water. Probably could be a dock, something like that. But they attach their eggs. So you're going to find these fish schooled up tightly 
um, in these areas. That makes them susceptible to being fished for, which is great, and Jeff Sullivan is going to talk more about that in his portion of the Rhode Island report, but it also wakes up the largemouth bass. Um, so this is a really good time of year to go throw some big baits. You're going to throw bull shads or huddlestons or uh, line through trout or anything like that in a perch color. Um, you're going to have a good shot at getting a really big largemouth, maybe the biggest one you catch all year. Um, great time of year to target big bass. So that's one thing that's going on. The other thing that's going on is it does seem like spring is having a little trouble getting the anchor to hold. You know what I mean? I mean, we have, we have these really nice days and then we kind of fall back into almost feeling like winter and then we get some really crazy wind, we get some heavy rain and um, that's made the fishing inconsistent. But the one thing that has held true throughout the entire month and reaching back into February is fishing ahead of all these systems that come through. So uh, we have another big system coming in on Saturday. We've got, looks like we might have two inches of rain coming. Um, my basement, I don't think can handle that. But, um, but it's going to kick the fishing up a notch. Whether you're fishing for largemouth bass or trout, whether you're fishing for pike and pickerel, whether you're fishing for panfish, it doesn't matter. Um, it is going to kick these fish into a feeding mode. So take advantage of that on Friday and Saturday morning. Um, I think you'd be glad that you did. And um, the other thing that we're hearing about is just lots of trout stocking going on. Don't fish for them in Rhode Island because it's not legal in Rhode Island, but everywhere else, Mass, Connecticut, um, we are hearing great reports of guys catching trout all over the place. And, um, you know, the best way to do it is just look for the stocking reports on the uh, corresponding state's website and then go where they were most recently stocked and you're going to catch some fish. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Moving over to the regional reports now, I did see that the ice is off the ponds in southern Maine, so the ice fishing is over. Open water fishing is now opening up up there, and uh, from what I've seen so far, it's been pretty slow. Dropping down into Massachusetts, let's start things off with James Jukes. Morning, everyone. How about this, huh? This is spectacular. Oh my God, is it beautiful out here. Still a little chilly. But it's still March. And let me tell you, over the weekend, guys were catching. I don't know what was better, the carp, the pike, the bass, the trout, you name it. They were hammering out there. Funny thing was, I skunked. <laughs> oh, I didn't put many, I didn't put much time in, so, but that's that. What's everybody think about this sunrise coming right up behind us here? This is awesome. Oh, anyways, I didn't hear any uh, holdover stripers, but everything else was on fire, so it's all good, Dave. Uh, guys were catching fish on bait, on lures, uh, you name it. And uh, it was pretty typical catching, I guess, from what I hear. Uh, you know, nobody had to slow their retrieves or do any funky things. But let me tell you, uh, we're going to see some better days yet. Well, I also stopped in at the Saltwater Lewis Collector Show. That was pretty good down in Westport. Uh, and then this coming Saturday, we're going to see the Plum Island Surf Casters show at the Hope Church in Newburyport, 8 to 2. Uh, stop on by and say hi if you can. Uh, otherwise, enjoy everything. And uh, the fishing's only getting better from here. Uh, there was something else I was going to mention, but this is, this is catching my eye like you read about. Holy crap. Uh... Anyways, try and support your local tackle shops if you can, and uh, we'll see you next week, Dave. Alrighty. Heading out toward the Cape, you know, from Plymouth out onto the Cape, there's been very good trout fishing all through that area, and the stocking trucks are now spreading throughout the state, so uh, trout fishing is on fire pretty much everywhere we look. We have heard of some guys not doing as well as others. I think that has more to do with the uh, inconsistent weather than anything else. But if you target the ponds that were most recently stocked, like yesterday, um, and you go and throw active baits that are brightly colored, whether they're white, chartreuse, bright orange, something like that, um, or very reflective, like silver or gold, um, 
your odds are you're going to get into some fish. They, they're very reactive when they're first put in. They have no instincts at all, and uh, they just tend to lash out at things that are moving near them. So just cover water, and you should find some fish. Uh, also, you may remember that last week, uh, at the time of the report, the bass bite was kind of tapering off. And that was just because we had all that rain. A lot of these ponds came up to their fullest level, like this one behind me. You can't see it, but it's, uh, it's practically over the banks here. And um, you know, when you get that much runoff going into a lake, it also drops the water temperature, and that can shut the bite off for a little while. That's what happened for me. I uh, did a little fishing earlier this week, and uh, first of all, the water was so high I couldn't even wade in places I usually wade. And uh, secondly, the water just was so much colder than it was the week before, and the bite suffered. You know, we only caught four fish, and um, and that was not for a lack of effort. So <clears throat> we saw most of the guys having success were doing it with jerk baits, using longer pauses. Uh, you know, even up to like 18, 20 seconds, if you can believe that. Uh, but also hair jigs, Ned rigs, any any finesse thing. You know, the Demiki rig or something like that was working. Things have started to come back to life now. Uh, we're seeing guys getting some bigger bass again on jigs, bigger bass again on swim baits and things like that. So we're uh, we're coming back to coming back to square one here, and uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, trout stocking again has been rampant throughout all of Massachusetts. The Cape's probably the best place to go for that. Um, a lot of the bigger fish tend to go on the Cape. We've seen a lot of big brook trout this year, so that's something that you guys can get excited about. Really no saltwater action to talk about. I'm sure some guys are pulling some holdover fish from some of those Cape estuaries and things like that, but uh, no one's telling me exactly where. So uh, that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island, let's start things off with an East Bay report from TJ Kopecki. Hey guys, nice to be back again. Uh, got a quick video here for you. A little report for some of uh, South Coast Massachusetts and uh, the East Bay of Rhode Island. And uh, I'll start off in Massachusetts like I always do. Uh, since last week, we're talking about the trout stocking and some of the local ponds here. Um, finally, uh, Lewinbrook Pond in Swansea here got stocked. Uh, as along with the old grist mill and burrs pond in Seacon. So if you're from the Rhode Island area and you border any of these towns, which pretty much all border Rhode Island, you got some opportunities to uh, get out and practice your trout fishing before the Rhode Island opener uh, in April. Uh, ma mainly all rainbow trout were released in these ponds. I was able to get down to Lewinbrook this weekend uh, I just took a walk around. There was a lot, quite a few people there. It was actually nice to see guys out with their kids fishing. Uh, lots, lots of uh, just nostalgia for me, um, you know, being seeing everybody out there in the pond fishing. But uh, I, people were catching, the fish were jumping. Uh, it, it was a good day uh, for me just to walk around and just, you know, talk to everybody. So uh, if you have an opportunity to get over there, um, there's some good fishing right there. And it's not only the trout in there, um, there's some crappie, and uh, there's also some nice bass in there that we're biting too. So I've heard of bass up to two and a half pounds inside of that Lewinbrook pond. Uh, moving into the Rhode Island area, uh, white perch still uh, seems to be a hot item, uh, especially for me. I get out and did a little bit of white perch fishing uh, in the East Bay myself. Uh, my friend Matt's been fishing in Echo Lake in Barrington uh, and he's been producing bass up to two and a half pounds and basically what he's doing is just slow rolling soft plastics uh, on the bottom real slow and he's been doing really well in there. Um, I haven't heard much more from the East Bay area. I know um, that to tog season will be starting in two weeks. Uh, so I've been gearing up for that, uh, getting my rigs ready, my jigs, got, you know, I got all my line on my new pole ready for my Tatagan. Uh, I'm set to go and uh, I'm sure a lot of, you know, all the people out there, we had a beautiful past weekend. It's a little colder this week. Um, so 
might slow the fishing down a little bit. But uh, either way, spring's here, and uh, happy first day of spring to you. And we'll catch you next week, tight lines. Now, something we're seeing more of this week is more herring moving into the runs of Rhode Island. And that is going to do two things. It's going to, well, first of all, it's going to do three things, really. First of all, it's, an, it's another sign of spring, and you always love to see that. Um, it's going to fire up these holdover striped bass, and we're seeing more and more evidence of that. You're going to be able to target them with bigger baits now, things that are moving a little bit faster. Uh, because those herring are there, those are, you know, that's inspiring these fish to put a different level of feeding activity on. They're becoming more aggressive, which is a great thing. The other thing that's going to happen is on the other side of the run, so once they climb the ladder and get into the pond, you're going to start seeing, you're going to see this big largemouth bass are there waiting for them as well. And, um, that's a great thing if you got one of these ponds that has a great perch population and some and a, and a herring run. Boy, you know, this is some fat largemouth that are going to be feeding well right now. And this is the best time of the year to do it in those herring runs because there's not a million herring in the pond yet. You know, they're just starting to come in. So, you know, any opportunity they see to attack something that's a substantial meal, they're probably going to take it. Uh, so it's a great time of year to catch the biggest largemouth of the season. For a little bit more on the perch spawn and some other things happening in freshwater, let's toss it over now to Jeff Sullivan. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Jeff back with a weekly video. Um, this week, I'm going to dive in and talk to you guys a little bit about um, our spring yellow perch fishery. Um, our pre-spawn into spawn yellow perch fishery, I think it's an absolute blast. Talk about numbers, talk about beauty, talk about just overall just awesome time on ultralight tackle. Um this time of year, I kind of, I'm kind of moving my attention more towards largemouth because that's my favorite fish of all time, and I absolutely have an obsession over them. But right now, it's I'm I'm switching, I'm kind of switching gears out of white perch fishing and going into yellow perch fishing as far as the um, the panfish species go. Um, but I I probably have two more weeks of white perch fishing of um, for my winter fishing. But, I mean, I went out this morning and the bite was just on fire. It was just loaded with fish. So, it's kind of hard to turn my turn my head on that. Um, but, yeah. So, the yellow perch fishing has been outrageously good the last two, three days. Um, I've been fishing. I've actually been largemouth fishing and discovered um, groves and groves of yellow perch that are willing to hit everything in front of their face. Um, which is awesome. Um, it makes it for a fun time. Their colors are beautiful. So, it's great photography. Um, they're great eating if you're into that. It's the great table fare. Um, I prefer them through the ice and colder water like up north or more Midwest. But um, if you're into that stuff and you're into eating uh, <clears throat> good um, table fare, yellow perch is good. Um, I mean, it's awesome. You can catch them on a variety of different things. Um, I just use a select few things because I bring my bass gear this time of year. Um, so... I, I don't I only bring a few things for yellow perch and a few things work so you only need a few things you don't need to go break the bank and get all sorts of spinners and gadgets and whoozy whatsies and whistles you don't <clears throat> you don't need all that excuse me um so with that being said let's talk about what I look for when I target these um yellow perch in the spring so what I'm looking for is stability in the weather. That's first and foremost. I, I want stability in the weather because it makes those fish move up and do and go through the motions faster, especially when the sun's beating on the water. Um, it gets that bottom warm. It gets things going. gets life moving. Um, it gets those perch active. Um, and when those perch are active, the bass get active. Um, I mean, every pond or lake has its own ecosystem and its own personality. So depending on where you are, it might take a little time or it might be already going. You just don't know yet. You haven't went. Um, but it just takes time on the water. Um, also, um, I like to target mud bottom, coves, drop-offs, definitely ledges, and um, current. Like if you you know the slack water outside the current, the current breaks, I should say. You know if you have if you have a lot of current rushing through each side of that current where the slack water is, will hold some fish too as well. And I like to um, the jig inside holes like mud holes or rock holes. You you know you'll find you'll find a pile or something, um, you'll find a rock pile and then you'll find you know holes inside that rock pile. Usually there's a, there's a school of yellow perch that will hang in there in thick and tight. You just have to get them to react to get them to eat sometimes. But when you get them to react, you can get I mean depending on how many fish are in that school, you can get I mean anywhere between ten to thirty or forty fish. You know it's all it all depends on what kind of school it is because um, they they they're schooling fish. They school together. They don't do much without each other. Um, 
yeah, but that that with with that being said, um, the stuff I like to target them with is you know your basic your basic wrap shad jerk bait. This is a slow riser, but I make it suspend because I put fluorocarbon on it, so it neutralizes the slow rise. Um, I took the hooks off because I need to um, put new hooks on it. But that jerk bait, you can slow roll it, you can slash it, you can um, stop and go. I mean, there's nothing you can't do with the jerk bait. It's definitely the goat of cold water. Um, I love the jerk bait this time of year, all through the winter as well. Um, your classic rattle trap. I mean, I fish this like I fish for largemouth. There's no difference. The perch will eat it. They have no problem coming in and chopping on that. And the two baits I'm going to show you in a few moments, so you're going to be shocked because these fish get so fired up. I'm telling you, they see red and they just go. It kind of reminds me of bluefish when they just see red and they just eat until they, they just eat and eat and eat and eat. They don't care what's thrown in front of them. That was like it was today. It was crazy. I mean, bluefish are obviously more aggressive, but it was kind of the same kind of I'm hungry, I'm eating mentality. Yeah, that's what happened today. Um, you wouldn't believe me when I show you, but they ate it. They try to eat it. Um but yeah, the NLBN shad, everything eats a swim bait, no matter what time of year it is. I mean, you can't go wrong with swim baits, so I always have one. And I love the NLBN shads. They're built good. They're just a different type of swim bait. It just looks nice. Um, these work really well. I like jigging these off the bottom or slow rolling them just off the bottom. They just get, they get absolutely crushed. Um, and last but not least, my sad, sad gold spinner. This thing has seen better days. <laughs> so I think I'm going to retire this thing after today. I got this three days ago and it's already beat the crap. Um, so I'm guessing the fish like it. So we'll, we'll just we'll put it that way. I mean, it was straight at one point, but it's now retired. Um, good thing. They're only a couple bucks. So I bought like six. Um, but these things, th this thing catches me everything. <clears throat> not just, you know, not just perch. It catches me, you know. Uh, large mouth. It's, I've, I've gotten striped bass on this, believe it or not. I mean, nothing huge, but I've gotten back bay stripers, you know, up to slot fish on that. Um, I switched the hooks, obviously. I always switch the gear and everything. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I use as for tackle. I don't bring so much, you know, because I'm bringing so much large mouth gear with me, but you only need a few things, a couple spinners, cast master, maybe a Cleo spoon, um, definitely swim bait, you know, stuff like that. Because most of the time, when you're perch fishing, you're going to encounter a largemouth because they're not too far behind the, the yellow perch or the white perch, believe it or not. If you have white perch too, if they're landlocked in your pond, they're not too far behind them. So be prepared to hook largemouth or a bigger species of fish when you're pan fishing because it happens a lot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I like to target and what I like to use. The setup I like to use is a Jiggin' World 5.6 Ultralight with a 1,000 pen fierce. And this thing is absolutely amazing. I love this rod. Not because I love the boys at Jiggin' World. It's because this rod can handle some fish. Um, when you use this thing, if you use this thing, you have to get this rod. I'm not saying it because, you know, like I said, I love Jiggin' World. I'm saying it because this rod is absolutely a machine. Um you catch fish on it, you're gonna you'll you'll you won't want to use anything else again. Um, I put I put ten pound braid on the fierce with ten pound cigar fluorocarbon, and that's all you need. Um, if you're pan fishing, pan fish or perch, like that's that's all you need, um, and you are absolutely gonna have a blast. Time of your life, I promise you. I mean, yesterday I got forty fish, and then today I got sixty fish. I mean, that's a hundred fish in two days on that rod. It's it's just a blast. Um, but last but not least. Again, these are the two baits. I brought largemouth fishing with me today, but I had those perch so fired up. They tried to eat these. They try. I don't know what they were thinking or how they were thinking they were going to eat these, but they were attacking it. They just couldn't hook up because maybe the hook size. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they're just pissed off at it and just territorial thing, telling it to move out of the way because that does happen. They're just telling it to get out of here. Um, but, you know. If they were trying to eat it, they're out of their mind. <laughs> but like I said, I've been fishing for 30 years and I see new things every day. You know, that's what happens when you fish eight days a week. But all right, guys, same time next week. Thanks. The only other thing I'm hearing about in Rhode Island, besides the fact that trout fishing is closed, is that the head boats have made a couple trips out of Point Judith and so far the bite's just not, it's just not there. Uh, so we're hoping that things are going to come back like they did in April. We'll have a better codfish bait bite in April, but we're just going to have to wait and see on that. So for now, you know, uh, I would hold your fire until things get a little bit better.
Moving over to Connecticut now, I've uh, seen a lot more guys spreading out, or not spreading out, but sort of diversifying their freshwater fishing activities. It was mostly trout for the last couple of weeks, but I'm starting to hear more guys now doing some largemouth bass fishing, some smallmouth bass fish, fishing, and a lot of guys pan fishing. It's been a really good crappy bite, um, really, across the state. And I mean, all of this holds true across the state. There's no reason to kind of do it, break it down by town or by region of Connecticut. The, these bites are ongoing and they are good. Uh, trout fishing is still very good. You can go on the deep website or on their social media and find out where they were recently stocked. Um, that's a great way to ensure that you're going to get a few hits, catch a few fish. Um, and Connecticut does a great job. They put a lot of big fish in. So across the state, you're going to see, um, you're going to see great trout action wherever you go. Uh, one thing I would watch out for is we've got a lot of rain coming in this weekend and that's going to kick up the flow. So if you want to hit someplace like the Farmington or something like that, you may want to do it before that rain falls. And also that rain is going to, you know, blow out the Connecticut River. So if you want to get up there and fish for some pike or look for some holdover stripers or whatever, uh, you may want to do it before the rains come in on Saturday afternoon. So keep your eyes on that. For a little bit more on the things going on in that region, let's start things off uh, on the Central Reports with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody. So, after what was a mild, but nowhere near as warm as it had been, week, uh, we're coming into quite a little cold snap here for the weekend. Uh, and that's going to have some impacts on the fishing, of course. Uh, now, even though it cooled down quite a bit from the week previous, I've been having fantastic smallmouth fishing uh, at the mouths of a lot of tributaries and up in the rivers themselves. Uh, big staging fish. I imagine that'll slow down a little bit with this cold front here. That might not be the case. The pan fishing should kind of stay pretty decent uh, and the pike fishing should stay fairly good as well. The Connecticut River's settled out quite a bit lower than it was. Uh, still, still fairly stained, at least the main stem of the river. Uh, but that will change with time unless up north of us gets a big shot of rain, which certainly could happen. And the trout fishing in the tributaries is still cranking pretty darn good. Water temperatures in the mid 40s, uh, definitely making those fish fairly active. So even though this cold front should slow some stuff down, I imagine it won't be half bad. Now we'll check in with Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. And don't forget, he's going to be at the show this weekend at Mohegan Sun, and he will be delivering a seminar, and he always comes through with something awesome, so don't miss that. Here he is. Hey, all. This upcoming weekend is the Connecticut Fishing and Outdoors show at Mohegan Sun, Friday, March 22nd to Mo Sunday, March 24th. I'll have a booth there with an electronic display from Humminbird, as well as some Shimano and G. Loomis rods and reels. So stop by and say hi. I'll also be doing seminars Friday at 4 p.m., Saturday at 2 p.m., and Sunday at 10 a.m. So hopefully you could stop by and check out my seminar. Right now, I'm getting the boat ready. We're going to be starting in two weeks fishing for stripers. So if you're interested in booking a trip, make sure you reach out or go on the website and check out our openings. Thanks. And then we'll wrap up the central state reports with a check-in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. What's up everyone, Matt here at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Um, still kind of continuation of the pattern the last few weeks, although we are going to go through a little bit of a colder spell here um, for it looks like 7 to 14 days or so. Got a little fake spring under our belt. Um, Fishing's been pretty good. Um, there's holdover action to be had for sure. A couple guys pulling out bigger fish um, over 35 inches, which has been pretty cool. Um, I found mostly chubby short ones, which is cool. Still fun to get that tug um, in the winter time from those stripers. Um, fresh water, um, plenty, plenty to catch fresh water. Crappie have been active in the morning on the surface. You can see them. Um, plenty of things will work for them. Shad darts, little spinners, um, little crankbaits, things like that. Um, slow rolling paddle tails has been good for freshwater bass. Pickerel will eat everything. Uh, trout stocking, uh, keep an eye on those local maps. See when they update. Those fish are, um, for the most part, pretty darn willing to eat, especially after they get a day or so to settle into wherever they got dumped into. Um, and that is kind of what's been going on. Lots to, to chase after and uh, lots of good weather out there, hopefully on the horizon. Uh, bundle up for these next handful of days and uh, get out there. Heading west from the river, you know, we've got all the same things going on. There's some largemouth activity. There's some really good trout fishing to be had. And then, of course, up in the Housatonic, you've got 
we're seeing more and more striper activity. I haven't heard about any herring going up to the top of the up to the dam yet, but they do have some Atlantic herring around, which is kicking up some uh, striped bass activity. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This past week, we've seen some bass caught on our beaches and our local harbors and estuaries. The bass are really starting to get active in our local waters, and it just should continue to get better as we move into April. It's not just the Housatonic anymore. I've seen bass caught, you know, Calf Pasture Beach, Sherwood Island, the Nauk Harbor, and way back up Nauk River towards Wall Street. These fish were keyed in on herring. The herring fishing this past week has been spotty, but everybody's waiting for the, you know, the arrival of the spring, uh, springtime herring like bluebacks and alewives. This should really heat up the local rivers and I've had some pretty good bites at the Housatonic in the past years if we get a really good run of springtime herring. Guys are still concentrating on the Housatonic at night for your bigger fish. You know, this time of year you get fish way up towards the dam, you know, Sullivan's, stuff like sp minnows you know soft plastics like paddle tails work really good you can up your offering too because herring are pretty decent size and then our local rivers and uh, streams are fishing well the state's doing a good job stocking and then you know you still catch and release right now it's starting in april you're allowed to harvest your trout you just got to follow your local rules and regulations thanks and good luck and that's what i have for you guys in the reports this week hopefully it's going to inspire you guys to get out there I mean, probably my favorite thing about the reports this week, or everything we heard, is that the striped bass are making a, an earlier than usual migration, which is awesome. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing my striped friends come back. I'm sure all of you guys are as well. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head to our website. That's thefisherman.com. It's $29.95 for the year, and you're going to get a full taste of what we offer if you check out the website. We cover all the fishing from Delaware to Maine. We have three editions that cover that region, and with one subscription, you will get access to all three. You're also going to get whatever edition you choose, which I hope is New England, because that's the one that I cover. Um, you're going to get 12 paper editions, like magazines, sent to your mailbox. You're also going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email during the season, April to November, and you're also going to get digital access to all three editions. That's Long Island and New Jersey, as well as New England. Um, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. $29.95. You're going to get all that. You're going to get a free gift card from Surehold if you sign up online or if you come and see us at a show. You're going to get a plug, you know, a, a tsunami eye pop. You're also going to get a Surehold gift card. And, um, and you're going to get a subscription. So check us out there. But even if you're not interested after all that, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.